Hey guys, how you doing? This is Sam here for Dunk.com and uh, welcome to another very exciting sketch tutorial. Uh, today we are going to go ahead and uh, recreate the Google Sheets icon inside of Sketch. Uh, this is continuing the theme from last week where we created the Google Docs icon all from scratch. If you have not watched that video, I highly suggest you go ahead and do that now. Uh, we covered a lot of the basics, the navigating around the apps, the basic tools, and maybe some of the more advanced things like moving the vector points around and um, changing the colors and all that fancy stuff. But if you already know your way around the application, um, let's not waste any more time and uh, dive right into it. To start off with, I'm going to go ahead and create a new rectangle. It's going to be 136 pixels wide and let me just put that in manually and 107 pixels wide. Perfect. I'm going to toggle the border off. Let's go ahead and create um, a new triangle for our fold up on the right hand corner. And then again, if you have no idea what we're doing here, go ahead and watch uh, the last week's video. We cover a lot of the same concepts, how to create the fold, how to move the vector points about and all that fancy stuff. And I'm going to line this so it's um, on the top right hand corner of our background layer. Let's go ahead and do a bit of housekeeping. I'm gonna change the triangle to background, uh, the rectangle to background and triangle to fold. I'm gonna enter to enter the, uh, the vector editing mode. I'm gonna move this point so it's parallel with the bottom left hand corner, enter to confirm and make sure that your width and height are still the same value and lock that in. So now it doesn't matter if I decide to change this to 50, it still keeps the same ratio for me. Um, I wouldn't want this because it's too much, but uh, you can if you want to. Let's go ahead and uh, duplicate this and call it drop shadow and flip it vertically and horizontally and uh, we have our drop shadow. May not look like a drop shadow yet, but we are going to fix that. Now let's do something really fun here. What we did last week, I created the background layer, created a new vector point, change it to straight mode and moved it further down enough until it looked like it was in the right place. But this week we are going to do something a bit more fun. Let's get rid of this vector point here. Um, this is going to help us have exact measurements and beautiful thing about sketch is that the X and the Y axis take basic mathematical operations and this is how we can put that to our advantage. Create the new vector point, move it to the top right hand corner of your background layer. And on the Y axis, we know that our full layer is 24 pixels tall. So we can say plus 24. And that moves our newly created vector point exactly to the bottom right hand corner of our fold layer. Now what I can do, I can select this corner on the top right hand side of my background layer, go to the X axis and minus 24 pixels because our fold layer is also 24 pixels wide. And um, this will help you keep a very clean design. Um, none of that dragging and dropping and making sure everything's in place. It'll save you time and give you a more streamlined process of doing things. Now we're going to create the grid in the middle. Um, I don't really like that grid, so I'm going to um, create it my own way um, with uh, slightly different dimensions. I'm going to go ahead and uh, toggle the fill off because we only need the border in this case. And I am going to make this 62 pixels by 47 pixels. Gonna move this to the middle. 
and then we are going to have a look at our border options here. We have a few options when it comes to borders that we are going to explore today. By default, it is set to an inside border. You can set it to center or you can set it to outside and this will change the direction that your border is created in. But we are going to stick to inside for today. We're going to change the thickness to three and to create the lines, I'm going to press L on my keyboard and create a straight vertical line, 20 pixels from the left. Now, if you want to know where a, an item is in relation to another item in your workplace, you can select the first item and then the second one and hold down the option key on your keyboard and that will show you the grids with the um, dimensions, with, uh, with the um, distance in pixels. Now this looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, insert another line and this is going to be my horizontal one. And again, I'm gonna do the same thing with this uh, new created line, newly created line selected. I'm gonna press the option key on my keyboard and make sure that it's 15 pixels from the top. And I'm gonna press Command D to duplicate that item. And again, make sure that it's 15 pixels from the bottom. I'm gonna select all three lines and make sure that all three pixels thick. This looks great. Now I'm gonna do a bit of housekeeping, move things together and make sure that we are keeping a clean workspace and I'm gonna change this to grid. And uh, we are almost done. We just have to do the fun stuff now and uh, we are done. I'm gonna select my background fill and choose the color picker and pick the color from our design on the right hand side on the left hand side and I'm going to go ahead and select all the elements inside the grid group and change the color to white and I'm going to change the drop shadows the, the folds color and the drop shadows color. And this is great and this works, but it may not be the most suitable approach for the long term. And here's why. Let's say I want to go ahead and change the background color to a lighter color, maybe a totally different color. And you can see that I have to go in and manually change all those colors for the uh, fold and the drop shadow and that can be so much work and it's just so clunky but here's what we're gonna do we are going to let the background color pass through the fold and the drop shadow so to do that let's select our fold layer and change the color to an absolute white and I'm gonna select the drop shadow and change it to an absolute black. Now this looks horrible, but bear with me for a moment. Then we're going to go in and change the opacity of both of these two to 40%. And you can see how that gives us a beautiful effect. And um, it's like we are mixing the white with the green background and we're missing the black with the green background. And if I go ahead and change the background color now, you can see that these colors adjust as we change our color. And this can be a very useful thing in design because you don't have to change too many variables when you make one slight change to your background. 
Now we may have to fine tune it a little bit, make sure our um, drop shadow isn't as intense. And maybe I want my fold to be a bit more strong. So 45% seems to work for the fold and 35% seems to work for my drop shadow. And I'm gonna go ahead and make sure my grid is centered with my background. So I'm gonna select grid and select background. And center it horizontally and vertically. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and make the um, triangle one pixel smaller in width. We're going to shift everything one pixel and um, let's try this again. Twenty pix 22 pixels and 22 pixels and um, we can change the height to also make sure that it, uh, it lines up perfectly, but uh, not to worry for this uh, video. Uh, one more change that I'd like to make is uh, the, the, the ends look a bit too sharp for me. So I'm gonna select grid, expand, select my rectangle, and just change the border radius to one pixel. And uh, that is it. Um, you have recreated the Google Sheets icon inside of Sketch. Now, if you enjoyed this tutorial, uh, please be sure to subscribe to our channel. Um, it would mean a lot. And um, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to um, just comment below and uh, let us know what you thought. Thanks for watching.